Any of the four with the right permutation of results could stay up. In the driving seat were Norwich, who, if they could win their first away game of the season at Fulham, would definitely stay up. Hello, hello and welcome to another episode of Descendants of Cruyff and for you we have a very very special episode today the relegation battle story of 2004-2005 and we have Anurag Shukla with us uh, to narrate the story so Anurag, let me ask you this you know, by the time we reached match day 38 it was almost like a mathematical conundrum of sorts you know, any of the four teams could avoid relegation so, you know, how did that happened how did we reach that point absolutely so there are four clubs that were involved here uh, one was named west bromwich albion second was southampton a third was norwich city and fourth was crystal palace and if you look at the context about what these clubs were how did they come about they all have a very different and unique story like let's say if we talk about west bromwich albion for example mm-hmm. uh this club was basically started by factory workers. Like back in 1978, like a couple of workers from George Salter Springs factory, like they started this club and that's how it, you know, slowly, slowly it, it yes, began. Yes, and, you know, uh, one of the very interesting story is that people say that back in the day, like the sports retailers didn't have enough resources for them, like back in their hometown. Mm-hmm. So these, pe- these players were forced to walk to the neighboring town called Wednesbury. Like the Sheffield Wednesday, mm-hmm. Sheffield Wednesbury. Mm-hmm. So that they have to go and walk till there to get the balls. Oh. So that's how they got their early nickname, which was called the West Bromwich Strollers. Oh. Yes, because they had to go and walk they till there. They had to go there to get the balls. Yes. Wow. And then eventually, you know, it transitioned in, and they adopted the name Albion because of the region that they belong to. Mm-hmm. Uh Honestly speaking, a fairly mediocre club, but I think one of the greatest spells of success was back in 1960s, I guess, where, you know, they won the League Cup in 65, runners-ups in 66, FA Cup winners in 67 as well, Mm -hmm. which because of that, they even went till the quarterfinals of UEFA Cup, uh, UEFA Cup Winners Cup, that that is, uh, in 1968. 1968, okay. And furthermore, like, again, this is slightly off topic, but like, just giving these knowledge nuggets for our listeners. West Bromwich was also one of the earliest clubs to, you know, field um, African-American players in their squad. Oh, yeah. So that, that wasn't a, uh, quite a common practice back then. No, not at all. Not at all. Like, uh, you read these stories and you'll find out that how even their own teammates used to basically, you know, pass on these racist comments and slurs and... I how mean, yeah, I mean, you can still see the footprints of those uh, things till today so I mean uh, yeah it could have been yeah Mm, moving on to the present context like I mean by present I mean Mm 2004-05 like situation changed drastically for them like once Premier League was formed uh, they were relegated to the third division because like prior to the formation of the Premier League they were in the second division Mm -hmm. but then Changes happened and they shifted down to the third division and it nearly took them 10 years to get back to the Premier League again. And (laughs) it it didn't last long. They were relegated the very next season. And the reason why all this context is very important is because they jumped back. They came back to the Premier League as Mm runner-ups. And now they are playing their second season in the Premier League. That is the 2004-05 season. This is year 2004-05 and they this is the second the season second season in the premier in the league. top flight and obviously we're talking about uh, match day 38 right yeah so this so is match day 38 we are slowly we are slowly yeah. like unfolding that how you know everything came up yeah. like i told the picture bef- okay. about how their story was prior to the start of 2004-5 and in the coming section we will be discussing about prior to this particular match day everything everything and like even if you look at the context from 2020 we realize that West Brom is kind of a yo-yo club like they mm-hmm. go up they go down so like you know pretty yeah. unstable second one uh, Southampton um, unlike the previous one Southampton was actually a church club yes yes the so St. Mary's right yes the St. Mary's church uh, back in 1980, 1885 so 
इट वॉज इसेंशियली कॉल्ड सेंट मेरीज चर्च ऑफ इंग्लैंड यंग मेन्स एसोसिएशन यस सेंट मेरी सेंट सेंट मेरीज वाई एम एम विच दे एवेंचुअली चेंज टू सेंट मेरीज एफ सी एंड देन टू साउथ हेम्पटन Uh, obviously they're called saints as the nickname yes that's for that's why they adopted the name saints uh 80s was there definitely a better uh, better you know era kevin keegan again mm-hmm. a big right, liverpool right, right. big liverpool icon kevin keegan yes uh, he led them there they finished runner ups of the first division back in 1983 oh. and again couple of champ couple of uefa cup appearances here and there uh coming to this year yeah they had kind of a decent team to be very honest they had a young prospect in peter crouch couple of washed up veterans to be very honest usually is a good recipe for success in mid table yeah i mean when when your goal is to survive i mean that could have worked or did it yes that's that's the uh thing. third is the crystal palace uh crystal palace i think yes liverpool fans are kind of familiar with them so <laughs> <laughs> uh Crystal Palace uh okay fun fact mm-hmm. the Crystal Palace official date is 1905 but according to the sources that they have claim mm-hmm. uh their actually first establishment dates back to 1861 which again if it's like it completely it's a 46 year yeah if, like if it is it, if it is verified they become the oldest professional club in the world wow so like again the roots are there in so on so and they were also the founding members of the premier league as well like they were present in that 92 season but then relegation happened and like even and and mind you like this goes out for the listeners as well like uh, following the relegation back in 1998 they went into like administration in 1999 so the new owner comes in gets them debt free and then again the, their rise happens yes so why is that important because when you look at this club <clears throat> which gets back into the premier league and they finished 6th in 2003 4 they won the playoffs they came via playoffs okay so for them this particular story about their administration is important because now we are talking about a club for whom playing in the top division means getting that financial aid thus ensuring their own survival yeah yeah so like for them the stakes are already very high yes last and not the least is uh, norwich city norwich city has a very different story okay uh, like oh, all amongst all of them right? yes the canaries mm-hmm. you know why they are called the canaries uh no uh they are called the Cana- very simple story uh, yeah. they are called the canaries because the chairperson that they had back then like who mm-hmm. the first one he loved petting the canaries oh wow so he gave that name canaries and uh most of they got that into the logo as well right yeah so, so uh like back in 1902 robert webster and joseph nachi like they had a meeting and they mm-hmm. decided to form a club that went on to be novet city couple of uh, you know interesting moments here and there as well um fun fact uh they finished third in the inaugural premier league season Oh, that's nice. Yes, like but, it is worthy of a story. But it was all downhill after that. Absolutely. Um, they even defeated Bayern Munich in the UEFA Cup. By the way. I mean, yeah, the more backwards you go in in terms no, of but football, like Bayern, yeah. more these crazier things keep you know you just keep yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you you keep seeing them. Yeah, like uh, they went to the third round. I think Inter eliminated them. So it was like uh, I think United were the first winners of the Premier League. Uh, Aston Villa came second and third was Norwich. Oh, like it's crazy to think about it now but so context to 2004 they came as the second division champions. So champions were the Norwich City. Runners up were runner runner ups were the West Bromwich Albion. Oh. And the third spot was won by a playoff yeah. comp- competition which went to the Crystal Palace. Mm. So those were the three teams there. Fourth was the Southampton which is already here for like past 25 26 years. So that's what the story was and i think like even now the listeners can get familiar that there were a b c d four different teams four different kind of backgrounds here mm-hmm. and pretty much everyone had their own things like for crystal palace financial survival was so much important west right. brom kind of a yo yo club you know trying to find the stability there norwich division champions they were eager to prove for southampton there was it was about like 
ensuring that they stay here obviously Because when you have the money like when you survive when you mm-hmm. you get that premier league money i mean back then i'm not sure that uh, tv right deals weren't that uh, kind of favoring these small clubs but at the same time it always helps if you're in the big league exactly and like especially for southampton they felt like again like pretty much what they are in 2020 they felt like they were improving at one point mm-hmm. but then it just like one season they finished 12th and then the next one you can listen to the podcast you will know what happens next okay okay so, so the yeah. back story this was the back story and now coming to the main course mm-hmm. how did we come here and how were they performing <laughs> in one words at shambolic obviously because my god these four teams were horrible very bad like if i i when i was researching for it uh, i found a fact that uh, on match day 19th which is like the half you know yeah, you, yeah, you are the halfway day. there in the in the competition uh just to give you a context chelsea only lost one game yes the whole season yes even obviously and even in the half season mm-hmm. west bromwich albion only one game the, the entire half season wow that's not it West Bromwich won just one. Mm-hmm. Southampton and they were like two wins and three wins. So oh. like if you add up, you are not even matching how many. Like it's crazy. It's, it's, it's obviously it's, 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 obviously it's crazy. horrible. It's horrible. Like if I look at the results for all these four, like you know, they sound at times like when I was analyzing their performance, they felt like you know, bunch of goons who are like, you know, the class clowns mm-hmm. of sorts. Mm-hmm. Like. the west brom 4 4 1 against chelsea norwich 4 nil against charlton west brom 3 nil against united like these are all defeats as i'm speaking yeah but but these are all big teams as well oh no there is a surprise for you as well because like birmingham 4 nil mm. against oh. west brom there is like incredible crazy man mm. crazy aston mm. villa 3 nil against them blackburn 3 nil norwich but these are just i think three teams right that we've talked about Like I mean, none of them are less. To be very honest, we uh, I mentioned about Southampton, I mentioned about West Brom, yeah. Norwich, Crystal Palace, Crystal Palace five so, two against United. So one of them had one, uh, one defeat, uh, one win. Yeah. The other had two and three, right? Yeah. And the fourth one. Yes. So like, how it went was West Brom bottom of the table, just one win. Southampton two, Crystal Palace best of the worst, three wins. Oh. and norwich city two wins but again like they drew one more match so you know they were like just a point just ahead just a point above west brom and yeah by this time west brom already had like a five game losing streak they were getting bashed <laughs> like horrible i mean for a team that has won only one game i mean five game losing streak is not that Pre- bad pretty nominal pretty yeah. nominal right so like it, I don't know yaar at this point the less I say <laughs> the better okay okay and like if we fast forward it uh coming to the match day 38 and like you know the final day yes like at this point I think we have completely established that how bad these teams were mm-hmm. so match day 38 comes at this point the current tally is at like how much um 32 33 points each so so like as you must have like we have i think we've convincingly established that horrible performance by all of them and like you know prior to coming to this match day mm-hmm. norwich city did not even win one away game the entire season i'm i'm not surprised <laughs> like <laughs> horrible is like the go to word here so like coming to the last match day all these four losers just like kept on going bad and bad and bad and You know, match day thirty-seven is here, and only two points separate the four teams. West Brom is rock bottom, on so West Brom is rock bottom with thirty-one points. Crystal Palace thirty-two joint with uh, Southampton thirty-two and Norwich thirty-three. I think you can see it on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you will. So, coming to the last match day, uh, a little context again because how did this? How did they mess up so bad? So I'll go just since Southampton is on top I'll pick Southampton here. Okay, I'll start with Southampton here. For a team that has been here for 23 years, more than 20, 23 24 25 years, they had their chances. Okay? 
लाइक ऑन मैच डे थर्टी एथ साउथ हैम्पटन प्ले क्रिस्टल पैलेस डे डायरेक्ट ट्राइवल्स सपोज इट डायरेक्ट ट्राइवल्स साउथ हैम्पटन मैच दैट अप पीटर क्राउच गेट्स अ रेड कार्ड क्रिस्टल पैलेस इज यूरोन मिडफील्डर सोरोनो गेट्स अ रेड कार्ड अ मैच दैट दे शुड हैव वन एंड्स टू एंड एज एट अ टू 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 ड्रॉ एंड a match day prior to this they defeated norwich city 4-3 okay so when they won that game they they came at the first 17th position so right now for them the scenario is very clear you win against crystal palace you are safe they didn't they messed up so the next game like you know i think football is a very cruel game if you don't yeah. take your chance you get punished punished for it the their final game of the season is against Manchester United. Oh, a very, very, very good Manchester United. And you will, you will see, you know, yes. that how And bad. Apparently, uh, Manchester United had this young kid that they bought of eighteen years old, I think. Yes. Yeah, from Everton called Wayne Rooney. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One For... of the most expensive teenagers. Yes. And fun fact that he. Ended up as uh, Manchester United's top scorer that year with seventeen goals in all seasons. I guess. Wow! Wow! That's that's amazing. So yeah. And this team will punish them. <laughs> let let me tell you that. Mm-hmm. Mm, I'm going random right now. So let's talk about West Bromwich Albion next. So continue, Gartan. So next, uh, West Bromwich Albion. Mm-hmm. For a team that. Only won one match the almost entire half season. They actually did pretty well when you know they were they were actually able to see the finish line. Like kind of well, they got points again. Like you know typical lower table team thing that you they win the points when no one expecting to and when they shouldn't have they messed up real bad. So like h- how many wins uh, on match day thirty eight? Prior coming to match day thirty eight, they did really well. They went from just winning one match to winning five matches. Like a total of five matches. Yes, total five oh. matches. Okay, so four more. Yeah, mm-hmm. they got draw against United. They got draw against Tottenham. Oh, but they drew against Blackburn as well, and Arsenal thrashed them bad four one. Mm-hmm. So just two matches to go. They had one of the worst goal difference amongst all these four. West Brom was doomed dead. Like everyone he was expecting, West Brom will be going out. Norwich City, my like Crystal Palace was like, let's just like just to swift things up. Crystal mm-hmm. Palace was horrible. Did not even bother covering them because nothing, nothing, nothing exciting or you know worth covering about it. Norwich City, on the other hand, they were pretty. They were in a pretty good form. Like Norwich City was again a club that should have you know cup covered, should have you know closed this case. Oh. They didn't. uh match day 33 got two consecutive wins although they lost against southampton but they won against birmingham that means that they were out of the zone okay for a time being and then coming into the last match day uh they just they were 17th mm-hmm. they had to win against fulham the the 15th place team okay they win they are safe it was that simple for them okay so if norwich wins the rest three are gone Oh. But for Crystal Palace, they have to win. Norwich has to lose. Oh, and like This that's where it gets tricky. Exactly. So like that's how it goes. Mm-hmm. Like the lower you go, the higher other teams has to lose. So for, if West Brom has to win, other three has to lose. Mm-hmm. So like ball was firmly in Norwich's court. Mm-hmm. Well, Southampton kind of messed this one up, but still there was like you know, thoda sa tha. Mm-hmm. Other two had a lot to do. So now we come to the point, like fifteenth mm-hmm. of May, two thousand four, two thousand five. So this is where it gets started. Mm-hmm. Like, and you know, for all my other viewers as well, this is this is this is called a twenty five million pound match, because once you go down to the championship, that's the kind of losses you have to bear as a club. Wow. So Norwich play against Fulham at Craven Cottage. This is their first time visit there. and mind you although norwich the task for norwich is very simple get the win seal the seal you know your survival yeah, yeah. they still haven't won a single away game the entire season okay and so, they are at craven cottage and they are at craven cottage mm-hmm. so frankly speaking this was not a good start for them as well like they did not look like or they did not even feel like they they even want to win this one to be very honest 10 minutes in thomas rodzinski found brian mcbride 
Fulham scored. Ten minutes in, <laughs> in a match you are supposed to win, you are one nil behind. And then, uh, Booba Diop scored a direct free kick. Two mm-hmm. nil at half time. And they're two nil down. Yeah. Southampton, meanwhile, obviously winning against Manchester United is never, never a like easy task. And that was like one of the prime Manchester Manchester United, United teams. Yes, sir. Uh, so, but thankfully Southampton started well. Okay. Uh, Graham Lasso. Um, I am pretty sure Chelsea fans yes, remember. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Graham Lasso. We'll come to him. Yeah. So, uh, Graham Lasso. I don't know for what reason he took the corner, mm-hmm. and John O'Shea scored an own goal. Oh. Yes. 10 minutes in Southampton lead Southampton for a while is in a control of their destiny so uh, where is this match happening this match is happening in St. Mary's okay so they have the home they advantage. have the home home advantage yeah mm-hmm. and Southampton was doing pretty well okay until they weren't okay then so uh, John O'Shea got his way back okay uh, he he put a brilliant cross in and Darren, Darren Fletcher scored a brilliant header like barely 10 minutes pass again so this is almost 20 minutes right yeah so on the 20 Na- actually 19 minutes to be very precise okay okay so so roughly around 20 minutes uh, we have 1-1 one, 1-1 one. One, one. Southampton mm-hmm. is back from where they started mm-hmm. and like table is more or less the same Crystal Palace like they needed a win mm-hmm. not a good start again like uh, they were playing against Charlton. Mm-hmm. Uh, Charlton was eleventh place. Charlton, by the way, Alan Kerbishley side. They were they were pretty like just another mid table team. Like they any okay. Like you know how it is. Mm-hmm. So uh, Chizhi Chef basically you know carved open Palace's defense with a brilliant through ball. I think like you should see that video. Sure. And he finds Brian Hughes, chips it over the goalkeeper, one nil up. Mm-hmm. Palace's moods are damned. Like. They are very, very, you know, not 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 in the highest spirits. Mm. Later in the first half, uh, Jonathan Johansson. By the way, uh, Danny Murphy's free kick. Like Jonathan Johansson just managed to get a foot on his direct free kick just outside the box. Uh, it didn't go in necessarily, but like you know, it just came out, touched the bar in the net. The crowd went crazy. They thought they thought the ball went in. Oh, and like. You should see the faces of Crystal Palace yes, yes, staff. Yes. Like they were like, <laughs> "This is over," but thankfully it wasn't. So, still one nil at half time. Uh, West Brom, on the other hand, the team, the underdogs, like nobody else was expecting anything from them. Mm-hmm. They needed a win at all cost and just you know sit and pray that other three teams lose. lose. Yeah. Nil nil at half time. Nothing much happened there. Mm-hmm. So like at half time. The point tally was something like Southampton was at 17th, okay. uh, 33 points, right. and uh, minus 20 goal difference. Norwich was at 18th, Palace was 19th, and West Brom was still 20th. Now it gets interesting even more. So let's again remind everyone that Norwich needed to win this, right? They are already 2 0 behind. When you're already 2 0 behind, your only aim is supposed to be like theoretically speaking is to score three goals. Yes. Hope they don't respond. They concede again. So it's 3 0. And three. again. Oh, it's 4 0 then. <laughs> Zat Knight scored a brilliant volley. And <laughs> trust me, Sadan, when I say this, it's only going to get worse from here. Okay. So Norwich 4 down after half time. Exactly. And why it only gets worse for Norwich is because Crystal Palace scored. <laughs> so uh, the opposing goalkeeper, Fitz Hall, you know, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, op- Fitz Hall, their own defender, uh, won the header because of uh, a very iconic keeper turned out to be, uh, Kaylee's goal, ki- goal kick. It basically, I don't know, in a very, very weird, in a, you know, typical British manner where the goal defender wins the header. It's a looping ball that oh, comes yes, in yes, and yes, the yes, striker yes. makes the run. Like a typical British game, that yes. is. Uh, Dougie Freeman finds it and charges and somehow, you know, um, dings the bouncing ball over the goalkeeper. Okay. 1-1, Crystal Palace is back in the game. And, you know, with like, thodi si kisma, like just a slight ray of fortune and... Crystal Palace will be safe. Yeah. And given that how things are going, that West Brom is drawing, 
Norwich is getting the you know they're getting United for Fulham is beating the shit out of them and Southampton is not going to win against United let's face it it's not yeah. happening so things are working in Nor- Palace's favor right now all right but but, but am i forgetting about a team oh uh, i think i am see even i think you forgot about west bromwich albion didn't you i think yeah we all did because they were I'll tell you At something. Bottom, yeah. Because in the second half, West Brom turned the hell up, man. So, 58 minutes gone, uh, Brian Robson bro- brings in a player called Geoff Horsfield. Okay. With his very first touch, he turns Zoltan Gera's cross in. West Brom is 1-0 up. Okay. And now, because Southampton is drawing, Crystal Palace is drawing, mm-hmm. Norwich is losing. Losing. Guess who is out of the relegation zone now? West Brom. Yes. So suddenly West Brom can see the light, and they are out of the relegation zone. Southampton, meanwhile, a team again, like I said before, a team that should have sealed promotion two game weeks back. Mm-hmm. They continue to mess it up, man. They continue to mess it up, and like. My God, I hate that. They shouldn't have, you know, let this come to this yes, situation they, they at all. They shouldn't have been in this position. At all, man. At all. So what happens next? Alan Smith. Mm-hmm. Oh, gives, Alan Smith. Yes, sir. Alan Smith drives the ball. Good cross inside the box to possibly the best striker during that time named Rude Van Nistelrooy. Oh, and Rood Van Nistelrooy heads it in. Manchester United, 2-1 up. Southampton is in trouble now. Southampton is in serious trouble now. So, at the moment, they're at the bottom of the table. And right? now, suddenly, the mm. table changes completely. Right. West Brom, at the bottom of the table, is at the 17th, 17th position. They are safe for the time being. Palace and Norwich still fighting for it. Southampton is at the rock bottom right. now. Yeah. But there is another twist now. Obviously, obviously. So, uh, so that, do you remember Andy Johnson? Andy Johnson? Like, Adam but, Johnson? No, Andy Johnson. No. Uh, like, back in FIFA 9 days, there was this bald English striker from Fulham. Andy Johnson, Andrew Johnson. Uh, I might have heard of him, but I am. Yeah. He, was, he was good, like low-key, you know, one of those FIFA players that you uh, grow up liking. It was his breakthrough season for Norwich. He right. scored 21 goals that year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's the... He scored 21 for Norwich and then this still... Um, I'm sorry, for Crystal Palace. For Crystal Palace. Yeah, even... I mean, even for Palace, if, if he had scored 21 goals, how the hell are they in this position? Exactly. It like baffles me out. It, how how are these clubs messing it so bad, man? Southampton... Peter Crouch, by the way. Mm-hmm. Peter Crouch had an excellent season for Southampton. Still at the bottom. Well, and I mean that's why I think that this is worth covering, right? Yeah, I mean, how can you not be romantic mm. about football? So, Charlton concede a penalty. Right. Adam Johnson takes it, and you can feel that tension in the yes, stadium. Yes, obviously, obviously, this is, uh, as Bill Shankly put it, more than more than football. Absolutely, it's mo- I mean, he, said he more slots than it in, less, but yeah, he slots it in. Palace is two one up again. Now, Crystal Palace is at number 17 spot. They are leading. Okay. And as it stands, they will stay. They will stay. They'll stay, right? (laughs) Let's see. Let's see. But on the other hand, but to be very honest, West Bromwich Admin still hasn't given up yet. All right. Like, they are not going to give this without, like, give up without a fight. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's this man, Geoff Horsfield, again. This time he turns a provider and he, he you know, produces a very slick, cheeky back heel. And this gives, and you know, his pass created a chance for another very low-key Premier League figure. If you remember, Kieran Richardson. Yeah, yeah. Kieran Richardson scored there. 
15 minutes to go west bromwich albion is winning 2-0 but is it still sufficient no because they need palace and southampton to lose and for crystal palace it's very simple right now all they have to do is just survive the last 10 minutes if they survive regardless of what happens they win they are safe Southampton on the other hand have to win against Manchester United and <laughs> and mind you this is a Southampton with and I repeat mind you this is a Southampton without Peter Crouch Peter oh. Crouch was suspended for this match oh so like less than 10 minutes to play and like crazy atmosphere like four different clubs actually three because Norwich uh, yeah Norwich mm-hmm Norwich was 4-0 down, right? Yes. And then they concede again. So they're 5 down. And then they concede again. And they're 6 down. Yes. So they're 6 down and they're hoping to secure a spot. In, you know, and to, mind yeah. you, mind you, 6-0 down on a, ma- on a day that you were supposed to win. They were still not mathematically out. Oh, okay. This is interesting. Yeah. Had... Had the other clubs, you know, messed up, Norwich would have survived despite losing 6-0 in a must-win game. Hmm. Unfortunately, football is not so kind. (laughs) Football is not so kind, my friend. So, 10 minutes to go and there is another twist in the Mm tale. So, Charlton, like, let me tell you something about Charlton. Alan Kurbishli's side has not been, like, the best thing in the in the world like Mm -hmm. very very mediocre side they did not create practically anything in in the entire second half but then something happens okay we are at the 80 second minutes eight minutes to go just eight minutes and west brom is still two nil up right and west brom is two nil up Mm -hmm. so uh, jerome thomas's free kick is from the edge of the box again so what happens is he takes a free kick and for some reason Palace's goalkeeper Gabor Kirali hmm. uh, I'll tell you something okay fine I'll just tell you this uh, Gabor Kirali is also one of the oldest goalkeeper to appear in the World Cup by the way oh, for, which team? or was it Euro Hungary Okay. he played for Hungary uh-huh. so like again like a very iconic figure in, in, in his own right hmm Gabor Kerali for some reason decides to you know push ahead and tries to punch the ball okay he could recipe for his disaster and he couldn't Jonathan Fortune heads the ball and he thumps the ball back in the net it's 2-2 Crystal Palace is in the relegation zone again West Bromwich Albion is 17th less than 10 minutes to play mm-hmm. so again bringing back whatever we have discussed so far there is a team fighting fighting for their financial stability. There is a team fighting for their own identity at the top flight. That's it. That is West Bromwich Albion. Yes. Norway City is done, but again, as the story will unfold, they will come back sooner than later. And there is there is, then there is Southampton, who has so much pride at stake that they cannot afford to go down. Eight minutes to go. Three teams in just one spot for the safety. As the time goes on, as the time goes on, frankly speaking, the only thing this particular thing, uh, this particular ra- roundup was missing was a, perhaps a last minute winner. We didn't get any, but the amount of sheer emotions that were there was like outstanding. Like I still get goosebumps whenever yes. I watch this. So full time happens and um, Norwich, is relegate, uh, Norwich is obviously relegated. Mm-hmm. Crystal Palace is relegated. So, at that point, the full-time happens at the Hawthorns as well. And, like, you should see the faces of people. Like, yes, yes, everybody yes, is yes. either looking at the monitor, looking at what's the updated table, what's the updated table. People are listening to the radio mm-hmm. as, you know, side-by-side side while watching the match so that, you know, they can get updated. Um, basically, Geoff Horsfield and the other teammates at the West Brom scam. Uh, I think I didn't tell the listeners this. Uh, they uh, West Brom was playing this game at Hawthorns, their own stadium. Mm-hmm. So, for some reason, Geoff Hors- Horsfield and the and his uh, other teammate they were already hugging each other. They felt that they have done enough, 
and my goodness when they got the news that they are safe everybody lifted job hospital on the shoulder and they paraded hawthorns went nuts nuts like people broke the barricades the yes, whole yes, yes. crowd flooded the gate I mean, that was i mean i'm mean, still getting those goosebumps <laughs> it was so amazing you you i mean I, i'm not sure if we're going to see anything like that now exactly and <laughs> with the empty stadium <laughs> more more so uh, not going to happen yeah But, and you know like why it's so special like uh, again because of these contexts i in context i told you guys yes. about like yes yes there is a reason why i included everything because it makes sense now yes. that how much it the promotion yeah, or the it, safety it, it means, means to them to each and every and one of them it's more about the club's own identity their you know the cultural history that they have and not only that because now this is an era that we're talking about is of of you know transformation exactly of, like of industrialization of football i mean one of the things that probably we hate about football this uh, was the time when you know staying in premier league was more lucrative than ever this was the time like you know premier league meant money yes and the way west brom did it was not only iconic but it was also a record in itself like uh, there is a very iconic moment in in the video itself when they you know they were they placed hosfield on their shoulders and like everybody was celebrating with the fans and everything the commentator said that the curse was broken so what that curse meant was that west bromwich albion for the most part of, of the premier league they were at the bottom of the table mm mm-hmm. just one win for 19 matches like who expected that yes and uh, <clears throat> like throughout the history no one no other team has done that when you know you stay at the bottom of the table for so long even at the christmas and everything and still come out safe i mean it was almost like they were planted the the feet so planted there the the you know the feet of the table <laughs> absolutely so like that's why it was even more special because let's 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 face it right like if you recap whatever we have just discussed so far so many times they were in the race they were out of the race in the race out of the race or even when they were like look at the odds they not only have to win this game they have to pray that the other team three teams don't yeah how likely is that and they still managed to get it so i mean probably the only upset that they i mean not upset i mean the result that they could be sure of is i think united <laughs> united beating yeah. southampton yeah absolutely and you know that's the only thing that i was kind of upset about mm-hmm. southampton shouldn't have done this and like again this is a kind of a bonus section you can say of the podcast because if you look at what happened from here on west brom and uh, norwich city were the yo yo clubs like if you come and ask me that oh, well what happened next season for west brom which i'll be they were relegated <laughs> but but for, for southampton right we're here for the story absolutely but for southampton they went to the championship they stayed there for few years then they were relegated to the third division there was a point when they were about to go into administration and dissolve as a club too oh. who that. knows like who knows had they not messed up those two games who knows if peter kraus didn't get that trade against crystal palace we might have seen something different <laughs>